Windows Recall has been recalled, for now at least. Kaspersky gets a good old fashioned ban, AI companies are at it again, Proton is shaking things up and more coming up in RH News Episode 3. Our first story concerns Windows Recall. After announcing the feature in the Surface Keynote, people started mercilessly roasting the feature. Microsoft made adjustments and even added a Windows Hello authentication feature to access the recall. You know, the thing that should have been added by default. In the latest move, however, they removed the feature altogether from the mainstream Windows updates and the company wanted Windows insiders to test the feature first, but it looks like even Windows insiders won't be able to use this cursed feature. Windows on ARM Insider Preview had all references to Recall wiped. Was there ever a feature called Recall? I don't recall. Ever since I saw Nadella do the Wall Street Journal interview where he was introducing Recall, I was watching him and thinking, do you hear the words coming out of your mouth? Personally, I think if they added the feature quietly, it might not have garnered the attention that it did. Recall was front and center to justify the AI use cases. This brings us to the next story. Several AI companies are scraping the web without permission to train their generative AIs. Until now, a protocol called Robots Exclusion Protocol was used. This basically tells web crawlers and other similar programs which part of the website are they allowed to scrape the data from. Most of the times, that protocol straight up denies any scraping, especially for AI use cases. The problem is it's kind of like an honorware system where the protocol was respected and complied with, but it's not legally enforceable. So a lot of companies are foregoing it to scrape that sweet, thick, juicy data. Tom's Hardware article points to an interesting argument that a lot of AI dev bros like to make. They're just accessing the free content that is free to consume and it's not like they're pirating anything or getting the paid content for free. Yes, but by doing this, you are directly threatening that website's existence. You're building a competitor to that website and every single thing where applicable will be derived from that website. That argument doesn't work, buddy. It just goes to show you the dichotomy between AI progress and the severely outdated laws, policy, procedures, and regulations. Moving on, Kaspersky has been banned in the US from selling its antivirus due to concerns mainly revolving around Russian authorities potentially trying to maliciously modify the products in order to gain intel. One source said it has privileged access to American computers and this could allow the software to steal sensitive information, withhold critical updates, or install malware. I literally laughed out loud when reading that. First up, the antivirus doesn't have to be Russian to do all these things. Any software acting as your antivirus can do this. Secondly, American computers? With a statement like that, you can practically see them creating a narrative. By that logic, any Chinese or Russian company conducting business in the US could be a legitimate threat. Ban all of them. Kaspersky responded with denial of any instance of Russian government trying to persuade the company to do the bidding. It also stated that the concerns are theoretical and there isn't any actual evidence. They will pursue their legal options to preserve their sales. And yeah, a US ban, even if the company is totally innocent, is a death sentence for international business. The stigma alone is extremely damaging, not to mention devastating for the competition within the industry. Now remember, no factual information was actually disclosed and this is just speculation from a nobody. Kaspersky was banned by FBI from running on federal infrastructure back in 2017, alleging security concerns. So this particular company has been a target for a while. So maybe the concerns are valid? When we think of privacy and open internet, the first thing that comes to mind is Proton and then Tor. The company recently announced that it's moving to a non-profit structure. In order to put privacy first, they needed to do this. If you want privacy and open internet, you need to prioritize the interests of your users instead of the investors. As a result, they founded the Proton Foundation. The organization will make sure that there are no corporate takeovers, no mergers, no prioritization of profits or stakeholders interests, especially where the privacy might be compromised. So basically, Proton AG, which will provide the mail service, cloud hosting, password manager, and VPN is a for-profit company, but the primary shareholder is Proton Foundation, which is a non-profit company, hence allowing it to control primary interests. I highly recommend reading NDN's letter. 
in which he explains the reason for not going with other business models. Also, this letter is extremely moving. In a world where your data is harvested from every single digital interaction imaginable and every company is subsumed by greed, it's unbelievably refreshing seeing these privacy advocates care about their users and the concept of free internet. And finally, real quick, Microsoft's underwater server experiment was a success apparently having less issues than their own land counterparts, but they're shelving the project. I assume to get more time to scale it. They also removed the guide to convert the Microsoft account to local Windows account in Windows 11. One more reason not to use Windows 11. And Nvidia temporarily became the world's most valuable company, surpassing both Microsoft and Apple. Well, that's it for the latest news, guys. Tune in next time for episode four. Thanks for all the support. Please like this video and subscribe because your mother just passed away. He's not passed away on your shit. This is Rogue Hat. Catch you guys later.